Thank you for joining Havis' virtual trade show to learn more about our updated innovative mobile solutions for the front section of the 2020 Ford Police Interceptor Utility Vehicle. My name is Sarah Meyer and I am the Marketing Manager here at Havis. I will be your host for the Havis Virtual Trade Show series. We are excited to showcase Havis products and solutions that increase the productivity, safety, and comfort of all mo mobile workers. I'm going to quickly review some housekeeping rules before we get started. First, for the duration of the show, all attendees' microphones will be placed on mute to ensure a positive experience for all of our attendees. Second, we have reserved time at the end of this show for Q&A. We request that all questions be typed into the chat box found on the bottom right side of your screen. Please note that Zoom offers two different viewing options, gallery and speaker. We recommend setting your view to the speaker view, which can be found at the top right-hand corner. This will provide you with the optimal view of both the presenter and the presentation. Lastly, Havis is recording all segments of the show for future reference. The link to the recording will be provided to all attendees shortly after the show. Now I'd like to turn it over to our first speaker, Chris Nonak. Good morning, everybody. I'm Chris Nonak. I'm a design engineer here at Havis. And uh, one of the main things I do is new vehicle 3D scanning and product development. So I wanted to walk you through a little bit of how we do that. Um, so basically, when we see a vehicle for the first time, we'll send the engineers out to take the interior apart. Um, we sort of work layer by layer, so we know how things come off. Uh, you know, this piece of trim comes off first, then the radio comes out, then this bracket behind it, that sort of thing. And we will take our 3D scanner, which is basically a big carbon fiber arm with a laser on the end. And as we reassemble it, we will scan those layers so that we have the data you see on the screen here. Um, this is a 2020 Interceptor Utility. Um, and I actually have a lot of the layers turned off so that you can see uh, the console and the dash monitor mount here. But we have a ton of information, seats, uh, we, the different positions for the steering wheel, the rear view mirror, where the glove box door moves when you open it, that sort of thing. Um, and we use that information to design new products. So uh, for example, you're looking at a uh, DMM 3015 dash monitor mount and a CVS 1012 console. Um, so basically we will get information from product strategy on what we wanna design, say how much space uh, we need for mounting in a console, what accessories we want it to work with, that sort of thing. And we'll use that along with what we learned about where the OEM mounting points are and how the car goes together um, and our 3D scanned model, and we'll design around that. Um, so we're looking for, you know, making it have the tightest fitment we can, especially stuff in the front of the vehicle here where you might set a driver's license down or a pen. We don't want there to be any gaps that that stuff could disappear into. Um, and working around whatever the car has on its stock that we might need to relocate. So for example, uh, there's an electronic parking brake that this console covers up. So we relocate that onto the side. There are some USB and 12 volt outlets uh, that we cover up. So we relocate these up here, make sure that they have enough clearance to run wiring, that the wiring's long enough. Um, and we make sure that it works with all of our products. So reinforcements so that you can mount a motion device to the top and it won't wiggle around. Uh, heavy duty mount on the side and it won't move around. Uh, clearance so that it clears the bottom of something like a dash monitor mount. Um, and then once we have a design that we're happy with, We'll take it and prototype it. It gets made on the same machines that we use for our production parts. Um, and we'll work with the technical support guys to install it, make any little tweaks for things that maybe are a little bit different in real life than they were in the model, um, and install other products with it. So if it's console, you'd put uh, radios and control heads in it. If it's a dash monitor mount, we'll put a few different docks on it, that sort of thing. Um, and once we have all that ironed out, 
we have a physical prototype that we're happy with. We will write installation instructions, we'll take photos and get all of that material up on the website and put it up for sale so people can order it. Um, just a reminder, there will be a question answer session at the end. If you have questions, go ahead and type them into the chat. I'm gonna turn things over now to our fleet product manager, Jeff Tripp. Thanks, Chris. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jeff Tripp. I'm a product manager here at Havis for the fleet product line. I'm gonna start off with um, a few pictures of some of the products that we have for the front of the vehicle, and then we'll come back here to this um, interceptor utility, and I'll show you some vehicles, uh, some products that we actually have installed in the vehicle. So let me just start by bringing up my PowerPoint here. Now, one of the things that we do as product managers is we work with our customers to understand the different use cases of products because we understand that one size doesn't always fit all. Um, so we'll start off by showing the five different consoles that we have available for this 2020 Interceptor utility today uh, that, that apply to the different use cases. I'd like to point your eyes over to the right side, first of all. Um, this is a pretty cool overlay that Chris did where it shows all five consoles um, laid over each other so you can see the difference in height. Um, and the console that we'll be talking about on each slide will be highlighted in a color. So for example, this horizontal and deep is highlighted in green. This is the deepest of all the consoles. It'll accommodate equipment up to 13, just over 13 inches deep. So this is best suited for if you have large equipment. Um, now I wanted to point out as well, you'll notice um, typically our consoles are nine inches wide and this one flares out at the front and that's to accommodate a modular printer mount uh, that we've designed uh, to fit a variety of consoles. And I'll circle back to that in just a moment. You'll also notice where it lands up against the dash is covering the parking brake module. As Chris mentioned before, that's something we look for and relocated it to the side of the console. Just above where this console lands on the instrument panel, you'll see a cutout. That's for the rear HVAC controls. Um, so if your vehicle were um, outfitted with that feature from the factory, then you would not have to relocate it with this console. The next console is our high angled. This is the 1012. 10 inches of mounting space up front, 12 on the flat section in the rear. You can mount equipment up to 10 inches in depth. And um, you know, I just wanted to remind you too, if you look up the individual part numbers for our consoles on the website and look at the resources tab, we have um, what we call side view depth measurement drawings available for all of these consoles because that depth will actually vary throughout depending on how the transmission tunnel fluctuates where wire or uh, HVAC tubing might be, might be routed. Um, so I encourage you to check out those for reference to uh, make sure that whatever console you choose will accommodate the equipment you need to mount in it. This one here, this 1012 also will work with the modular printer mount. You'll notice that um, the parking brake module is relocated to the left panel and this one sits much higher up on the instrument panel. So we've actually relocated that rear HVAC controller to that top panel. The next one is a medium height angled console. It's very similar, but it's a little bit lower. It accommodates equipment up to six and a half inches, has still 22 inches of total mounting space, um, but it is a little bit lower to improve operator comfort. Um, this one sits at right about the seat height. This will be easier if um, officers had equipment mounted to their belt, for example, provide a little bit more comfort there. If there was a situation where somebody had to escape um, the vehicle from the opposite side, they wouldn't have to climb over the console. They could simply slide over it. So that's a little bit um, more comfortable situation for that. This one does relocate the parking brake module to the left side, you'll see, but uh, if you look at the instrument panel, you'll notice that it sits just below that rear HVAC controller. So that does not have to be relocated. The next one is an ultra low profile angled 
This one actually sits below the seat height and uh, it will accommodate up to four inches of uh, equipment mounting depth. So in this case, this is best suited for using remote heads and really shallow equipment. You'll notice where it sits on that instrument panel that it sits so low you don't actually have to relocate either the parking brake module or the rear HVAC in this instance. Uh, the last of our traditional sheet metal consoles I'd like to show is the 1400. This is a low profile console. It'll accommodate uh, up to 6.8 inches um, of mounting depth. But you'll notice where it sits on the dash, it looks relatively high. And the reason for that is because this mounts to the factory tunnel plate. In all other cases, we remove that factory tunnel plate and mount the console directly to the floor of the vehicle. Um, but in this case, you're, you're maintaining that tunnel plate so it actually sits a little bit higher. It is notched out in the backside, so you do not have to relocate that parking brake or HVAC module if your vehicle is equipped with that. Coming back to those um, printer modules, we are offering now two modular printer um, uh, holders. And uh, in these, these are pretty sleek because they integrate that printer directly into the console. We can accommodate the Brother Pocket Jet or Brother Rugged Jet, which are uh, two of the most popular printers uh, in it with our customer base. And uh, it's pretty sleek. You can include the printer and the uh, paper roll. Everything is contained within that box. Um, it's got a simple flip up lid. So everything's self contained and you don't have to mount it to the uh, side or back of the console or the armrest as we've done traditionally. This one incorporates it right into your equipment mounting space. We do offer a full suite of other mounting solutions for the 2020 Interceptor utility, including tunnel mount. Um, this is a really nice replacement for the factory tunnel plate, which if you were mounting anything to the tunnel plate, you would have to drill it and then it would be essentially permanent or you would have to re-drill if you wanted to move anything. If you use our tunnel mount, uh, this is an aluminum extrusion featuring uh, um, multiple nut tracks throughout the top and side. So you can easily mount to it and move things around uh, very quickly. We did introduce a new cup holder. This has been out for a little while now. This fits all of our flat consoles. It has adjustable fingers, spring-loaded fingers inside it that will compress up against your cup or bottle to hold it in place. I'll show you this one in person in just a couple moments. We have an overhead bracket for the 2020 Intercept Utility that mounts simply underneath the sun visor brackets. You can see it's slotted so you can easily mount a variety of different items such as um, forward facing cameras to it. And of course we have a variety of floor mounting solutions including the uh, heavy duty base, pedestal mount kits, and flex arm mount kit. So that's all for the just the quick slides of what we have available. And now we'll move inside the vehicle where I'll show off some of the new products that we have installed here. We'll start up top here with a brand new product for Havis. This is our overhead console. Uh, what makes this unique is unlike other products in the market that are big metal box, first of all, we wanted to make this really low profile. We uh, came out with some contoured rounded edges this is a high strength polycarbonate. So we wanted to make sure that this was not going to impede on your head zone. We consulted with federal motor vehicle safety standards when designing this for head impact area. Um, so we wanted to make sure this was really low profile and uh, really smooth contour so it wouldn't impede in your, your head impact zone. This will accommodate standard uh, or remote light and siren control heads uh, popular uh, control heads from Wayland, Federal Signal, Code 3, and SoundOff. It uses standard equipment brackets from Havis, so you don't need a, a special equipment bracket. It uses the same equipment brackets that you'd use in any of our consoles. Something else that's pretty unique uh, and, and slick about this design is we're retaining the majority of the original equipment overhead console. Um, 
there are a few reasons for that. First of all, you have these dome lights that are incorporated in it. You have some really important indicator lights for your uh, passenger side airbags, for example. So we wanted to maintain all of that, all of that functionality. Um, what you have in the back side of the OEM overhead console is basically a dummy panel. We have you remove that overhead console, pop out that blank panel at the back side. You simply um, install a bracket, a retaining bracket, and then you install this overhead console here. And uh, the installation is really that simple. It can be restored to the factory condition if you'd like to do that at some point in the future. Um, something else that's pretty neat about this is this will work for the 2020 Civilian Explorer model as well. The overhead console is very similar, slightly different. On the Explorer, it has a sunglass holder in the back, but it's the same deal. You remove that sunglass holder. Um, like all of our products, we always aim to have a no drill installation. We don't want uh, you to have to incur any permanent modifications. For the Explorer installation, you simply have to drill two small holes on the inside of it for our mount bracket. Um, they will not be visible or exposed, and you can still return it back to factory condition later as well um, if you want to put that sunglass holder back in. This will be available soon, um, so stay tuned for more information on that. We'll roll down next to our dash mount. We have two available for the 2020 Interceptor. We have a 2000 series. It's the C-DMM-2018. That will accommodate up to four pounds of weight. Uh, so that's best suited for a light duty tablet or a touchscreen device like this TSD-201, which is a next generation touchscreen device from Havis. We'll have more information coming on that soon, but I'll just give you a teaser that this features better resolution uh, more wattage to the speakers and more input and output capabilities. So stay tuned for more information on that as well. Uh, what we have here in this vehicle is a C-DMM-3015. The 3000 series DMM is our heavy duty and that will accommodate up to 12 pounds. Again, no drill installation. Um, we have this nice metal tray up at the top that uh, secures it very well. Um, we have a redesign in the works now that will eliminate any sort of support leg that we've used here in the past to tie it into the console. We're going to tie that into the uh, dash. We'll make it a little bit simpler installation now. We have this friction hinge that will hold that weight upright, give you visibility to all of your controls here. Of course, you do have access to your controls and visibility you can simply slide this monitor to the side. Um, again, this, this will tilt either way, so a customer or passenger can see it. Um, but this will give you immediate access to everything up front. This hinge will support the weight in the upright position. We do not encourage anybody driving with it in the open position. But of course, if somebody were to take off in an emergency situation with this upright, it would support that weight. It wouldn't fall until somebody actually physically pushed it back down and latched it in place. Next up, we'll point down to this next generation console from Havis. And um, this is, you may have seen a prototype before. This is really the closest thing to production ready. Um, it will be textured and colored to match the interior panels in the future. Um, but this is really a, a big differentiator for Havis. Unlike our traditional uh, bent metal consoles, this one is, again, a high-strength polycarbonate, and it's really designed to look like it was a factory-installed console, but allows all of the um, equipment mounting that, uh, that you need to, um, to be successful to, to, to um, mount everything that you need in here. Um, we have a few different configurations. First of all, I'll point to the front up here. You can see we relocated the parking brake module as well as the rear HVAC. We have this um, hood up here. It is notched, so you have visibility to your controls, but you still have the ability to mount a motion device on top. This will hold up to 15 pounds. Um, we've incorporated some pretty trick and, and cool um, 
design features in here. First of all, just simple things like this. You know, we have a little card holder here. So if an officer pulled somebody over, they could drop their license into that card holder and uh, that would be held neatly and not fall, um, you know, out of, out of reach anywhere. We have a couple different designs for this forward section. You could get this to accommodate a um, remote light and siren controller. Or in this case, we have a hidden printer mount for the um, Brother Pocket Jet. Again, incorporates the printer and printer roll neatly inside, and the paper will just feed right out this slot here. We have 18 inches of horizontal equipment mounting space here. You'll notice, um, first of all, this uses the standard equipment mounting brackets that we use in any of our consoles, but you'll notice that every, all of the uh, screws are hidden. There are no exposed screws because everything is covered up with this nice finished trim, uh, again, to make it look like it's an original equipment uh, appearance. I'll move back to, um, we have a couple different cons, uh, uh, armrest options that we've designed to work with this Halo console. This is a nice molded design that, that really um, fits the contour and style of it. Um, nice padded top. This is a locking and hinge top. So um, you have a little storage bin here and then you can remove that to expose a, a great depth of storage in here so you can store any number of items and have them secured uh, with that lock. And lastly, I'll just point out this cup holder, which I mentioned before. It has the spring-loaded uh, fingers here to compress. It will hold cups and bottles up to three and a half inches in diameter securely and, and uh, without rattling around. Uh, just a reminder, we will have a Q&A session at the end. If you have any questions, please enter them in the text box on the lower right-hand side. With that, I will pass it over to my colleague, Dave Fillion, technical specialist with some installation tips and tricks. Take it away, Dave. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, my name is Dave Fillion. I'm one of the technical specialists here at Havis. Um, I'm going to go over some quick brief tips and tricks. So we've kind of some of the questions I have come in for the front end of the 2020 Interceptor utility. Um, some of the stuff we had come in over the first year is, you know, some questions about the e-brake relocation that Jeff and Chris had mentioned um, on our 0618 and 1012 console. Um, on those consoles, we did move the emergency brake switch to the side of the console. And you can kind of may notice here it comes off stands um, off the side of the console. 10, 30 second screws, relocate that to the side. We did have some questions come in um, where this e-brake may be binding a little bit, might be hitting. And um, one of the things we've kind of narrowed that down to is just to make sure that when this is installed, it's centered properly on the standoff. So slots in the switch might have a little bit of play, might cause the switch to go in a little bit crooked, which could cause it to hang up on the side here. So good tip and trick is just make sure that you know, when your installer is freely moving that switch before they put it in the vehicle and put all the equipment inside. Um, sticking with the theme of the emergency brake relocation, on our CVS 1210 console, we tried a different type of uh, bracket to hold the emergency brake switch. Um, this bracket kind of goes in a vertical orientation on the side of the console. And one of the things to take note is when this is going in, it needs to slide in underneath these metal tabs here. You can kind of see it on both sides. You want to slide it underneath this metal tab, push it forward, and then you can get it underneath the one in the rear, as shown in the slide on the right. And one of the reasons I wanted to spot like this is that this switch can be put in with the plastic of the switch over the top of these metal tabs. However, it will cause the switch not to sit right and kind of hang up on the side of the console and not line up properly causing error messages on the dash. So I just kind of wanted to highlight this um, in case you guys get any of your installers questioning why the switch isn't working properly. It might be as simple as just needs to be realigned in the bracket. Um, sticking with the theme of our 1012 console, it's the first console we came to market with for the 2020. And a lot of people were putting uh, large motion devices, our MD100 series, MD HDM300 series devices on the top of the console while using our DMM3015. Um, one of the things you may notice and you may have heard is you do encounter clearance issues when that happens. Uh, 
We did design the console for a motion device to go on top if you're using a laptop, but if you're using it in conjunction with a DMM, you would need to use a side mount keyboard mount. Um, kind of what's shown here, a couple options, is there CMM006331. We did pre-punch two sets of holes in the side of the console for this bracket to line up into so your installer doesn't have to worry about drilling it out. Simple bolt-in, carriage bolts, quarter 20s, whatever is convenient and it allows you to have a significant range of motion on the top of the console while still using our KBM, which gives you motion forward and back. Um, another option you can do is our CHDM204 mount. This allows you to also go right to the side of the console with already pre-drilled holes, allow for our MD100 series to go on top or HDM300 series to mount on top of that while allowing the DMM3015 a full range of motion. We do actually have one additional keyboard option we're working on currently. It's going to be our third light duty option. Um, I have a little bit of a smaller footprint than what you see here while still retaining uh, a lighter duty motion device on the top for keyboard mount if, you know, to compete. Um, last thing I wanted to point out is on our 1012 console, since this is the one console that covers the rear HVAC. Just wanted to take note that if this console is ordered and the vehicle is found to have rear HVAC, you would order this new bracket that goes up top here, and this can be put on at any time. It is simply re removing two screws on either side, you remove the top tray, and the new one goes in its place. The reason I wanted to highlight this is if the console is ordered and the vehicle is being worked on and they realize this is, needs to be added, and it's not something that has to hold up the install. It can be put on at any time, even after the vehicle is completed. It's a simple drop-in. And this still allows access to our motion devices going on the top of it. Um, I think we're going to bounce back over to Sarah now for some Q&A. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Let's take a look at what questions came in. The first question is, what do you recommend mounting on the hood? How much weight can the console hood hold? Good question, Sarah. You can mount up to 15 pounds of weight onto that um, halo um, hood. So you could mount any of our motion devices, any combination, up to 15 pounds. Okay, awesome. What are the pros and cons to using um, DMM 3000 or DMM 2000? So the difference between those really is the weight capacity. Uh, the 2000 series will accommodate up to four pounds, so it's best suited for something lighter duty, uh, like a lightweight tablet, um, whereas the 3015 or 3000 series will hold up to 12 pounds. So if you're using a, a laptop or a heavier duty tablet, you want the, uh, the, the 3000 series. Great. Okay, and we have time for one more, and it is what is the length of the available mounting space on the next generation console? Sure, there's 18 inches of mounting space on this console, and that doesn't include that front section. Um, if you if you mount if you get the version with the um, light and siren control up front, that's a, another four inch um, mount bracket up in that front area as well, specifically for the uh, light and siren controller. Okay, thanks so much, Jeff. Sure. These are all the questions that we have time for today. If your question was not answered during today's show, we plan to address all questions in a follow-up email. Jeff is going to now review the key takeaways from today's show. Thanks, Sarah. Just uh, some quick key takeaways. We have five available consoles in our traditional sheet metal style, depending on your use case and uh, equipment mounting depth needs. We have two available dash mounts, depending on your weight capacity needs. Of course, we have a full suite of mounting from floor to overhead and keep your eyes peeled for some information upcoming on our brand new products, next generation and overhead consoles. Thanks, Jeff. Currently on your screen are some of our key resources, including the Havis website, weekly newsletter, as well as our social media channels, hashtags and handles to follow. Remember to contact your regional sales manager, inside sales rep, or independent sales rep for additional needs or requests. Please keep an eye out in your email for the link to this recording. And again, thank you for attending today's virtual trade show.